crazy update out of the Celtics camp as they say that Kristaps Porzingis might be playing some perimeter defense this year as opposed to just staying under the rim. We'll break down the implications of all of that, plus Jason Tatum speaks out on how desperate he is to win and how the team is buying into winning a championship as soon as possible. So stick around for all that on this episode of Celtics Digest. But as always, before we get into the video, a reminder that 90% of you guys watching this video that's like hundreds and hundreds of you, maybe even thousands, are not subscribed. So hit that button right now if you want daily Boston Celtics news. We got you covered all season long. Bruce, let's dive into this. Jason Tatum is desperate to win. And I mean, look, I think a lot of the Celtics players are, but uh, boy, it's just cool to hear him say it, really. In a recent Bleacher Report exclusive with Chris Haynes, Jason Tatum you know, talked a bit about a few different uh, subjects. But a big thing was his urgency to win now. Quote, you can't come in with a mindset that this window is going to last forever. And I think that's the exact kind of mindset you want to have going into a season where you want to compete for a championship, right? You bring in this roster. I think the, the fact that all these guys realize this, like, we might only have a few years of this. We need to make the most of this now. Having everyone buy in, I think that's just like, that's kind of exactly what we want to hear from this organization. Exactly. I love Tatum's words and how he uh, said it for the team. I think him being a leader, obviously being one of the top superstars, we want him to be accountable for this team and want him to make sure that his voice is heard. And we've been hearing a lot about that. And that's great for the Celtics as well. Uh, ownership has also said that they want to make sure that this team is competing for the next six years, guys. So this team is going to be going all in, going into that second apron. And Tatum is going to be one of those guys that is going to be one of the main focal points in trying to lead this team and honestly being a great leader as well um he talked about how with his contract he's not really looking to dive into that as well this season he's looking just to win and be there in the championship and losing some guys like smart and rob williams are definitely hurtful to him but bringing in guys like drew holiday and christoph sporzingis he knows what that's going to bleed to and that's the banner 18 and that's what this team has bought into this season yeah it's awesome right i mean having that team mindset of like we got a great team we got to do this now is awesome now that can also sort of lead to having a bit of extra pressure on yourself right if you're like oh we need to do this now we need to do this now some teams can collapse under that pressure but the thing is the Celtics organization a lot of these guys have been there before Tatum Brown they've been to the finals Holiday has a title right like these guys have a ton of playoff experience already so I think that's not going to be too bad but Bruce I also kind of want to transition to just how kind of mature Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown Drew Holiday have been so far this offseason we've been hearing so so much more this offseason than any offseason before about Jason Tatum's leadership, how him and Jalen Brown, they're speaking up more than they ever have. And they're involved, they're training together in the off season more than they have before. They're in the practices with the hardest working ones. I think just not just the mindset of the team, but the morale and the, and the leadership shown from the star players is maybe the best we've seen in a long time. Exactly. I think that both of our superstars have really bought into their role this season of being the two main guys for the Celtics. I think they've realized that playing in the league, they've been in the league, you know, six, seven years now, they've kind of realized that they need to buy in on the defensive side of the ball. And both superstars obviously mentioned that they want to be defensive player of, on the defensive team this year. So these guys are going to be working hard and showing that morale, being great team leaders. Drew Holiday, obviously great community guy, great team leader on the teams he's played for as well. Kristaps Porzingis, you know, he's been a great leader, hasn't had the biggest roles with being a leader but i think with the celtics team he's going to come in and buy into his role with this team and realistically i think that brown and tatum are going to be the main focal points for this leadership and i think that the celtics are going to show that this season with their play style and in their locker room as well 100 it's going to be exciting well let's jump into this crazy Kristaps porzingis update um we're about to see something pretty major change for the boston celtics and it comes with Kristaps Porzingis. Now, with the departure of Robert Williams, of course, the Celtics lost a bit of defensive versatility, a guy who could kind of be all over the court at once when healthy. And, you know, we kind of see Kristaps Porzingis as more of a rim protector who doesn't quite have that positional versatility defensively. But that might change as we heard that Joe Mazzulla emphasized Kristaps Porzingis' defensive versatility a number of times so far throughout the early part of training camp. Certainly sounds like the Celtics don't see him as just a paint found rim protector now this is kind of crazy bruce i think with the impact of losing someone like a robert williams who does have a lot of that defensive versatility even grant williams at times and of course marcus smart who can guard basically every position the celtics might be looking for a guy who can kind of fill in and kind of play defense all over the court and i guess my first thought wasn't Kristaps porzingis but it's if he can stay healthy this is kind of a, a crazy development and i think it could pay dividends if they use him the right way 
I totally agree with you, Josh. I think that Christoph Porzingis could help out the Boston Celtics defensively a ton. Obviously, he said in his media day that he had a really good defensive season last year. He wants to keep up with that defensive season. And because he was in Washington, he saw it. But obviously, he's going to prepare that for the Boston Celtics. And I love to hear that he's going to be more than a rim protector. I know that with Rob Williams, you mentioned how we lost a big shot blocker and a guy that plays at the rim. And hopefully, Christoph Porzingis can make up for that with losing Robert Williams. But maybe we could see him do a little bit of extra stuff that we've seen some of our Celtics bigs as well do. Guys like Robert Williams jumping up to the three-point line and contesting shots. Maybe Christoph Porzingis can add that element to his game. Maybe bring a nice cornet court contest out there as well for the Boston Celtics. And that would be, I think, great for his game as he's so tall. And I think it would shut the guys out on the corners for threes. Yeah, we actually just brought in Porzingis so we could teach him the cornet contest. And that's been, that's been 90% of training camp so far. That'd be crazy, right? But I mean, we've mm-hmm. seen Wemby do this kind of stuff. And Porzingis is not that much smaller than Wemby, right? This kind of three-point shot blocking into transition. It's not that crazy, but um, I guess there is one kind of concern with that, Bruce. And that's his injury history, right? Chris Epps Porzingis has a lot of lower body injuries in his career, whether it's his knee or his foot, even just this off season. When you think of a world where Kristaps Porzingis is going to play decently heavy minutes with the Boston Celtics, especially with a somewhat depleted big man rotation after the departure of Time Lord, you kind of have, you kind of got to think, if they want to play Porzingis on the perimeter and not just have him be a paint-bound rim defender, it's going to be a lot more wear and tear on him. And if he's going to end up stuck on perimeter, guys, let's say the Celtics run a, a switching scheme on defense where, with Porzingis switching whenever he can onto a perimeter guy, it's definitely not great for the knees if you have to move laterally all around the defensive end and then also load or have a bit of an offensive load. Do you think that could maybe be a, a point of worry for Kristaps Porzingis being more versatile defensively? Um, or do you think the Celtics organization is definitely not going to push it that far and, and think they'll be a little careful with them? Um, I think it's a little bit of both personally. I think that the Celtics obviously are going to want to push him to be that guy. So they might in the beginning try to make him be more effective on the defensive side of the ball with him still being a 20 point per game scorer, hopefully on the offensive side of the ball for the Boston Celtics. Now, as the season goes out throughout, if you see him being forced onto guys like Giannis possibly or trying to be the big main Celtics front court defender, you might see his offensive game sort of deplete with guys like Pete and Pritchard or a guy like Sam Hauser maybe getting some more minutes and actually getting a bigger role on offense on the bench. But I honestly agree with you with the lateral quickness here on Kristaps Porzingis as well. I think it will be a little tough for him to get out there and play these guys on the perimeter. Obviously, closing out a corner three will be easy, but kind of closing one on the elbow if a guy's cutting up, setting a pick and he's running underneath you might be a little hard for Kristaps Porzingis to actually you know switch onto his guy. And like you said, with his lower body injuries, with his knees and everything like that, moving quickly, it's going to hurt him a lot to maybe even get there. Being seven foot, it's going to be a lot harder for him as well. So I could see there being some problems on some switches with the big men. Hopefully the wing that is playing on the opposite side of him at the elbow could actually help him out and cover for him. And then Kristaps Porzingis could actually move back to the paint to maybe give the second contest at the basket, which I think would be a great scheme for the Celtics to run. Yeah, I think so too. And, and again, like I don't think, you know, especially if Kristaps is like showing that he's struggling in whatever scheme the Celtics are running, they're not just going to keep running and right. Like they're not going to run him into the ground. In fact, that's the last thing they want to do. And pretty much everything the organization has said surrounding his health has been that we're going to treat him right. So while they say this, I think that, you know, in general, they're not going to run him into the ground, like we kind of said. However, you know, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, to kind of cap off this video, you mentioned a name in there, Bruce, and uh, it's a guy who we might have a bit of trouble guarding this season, and that is Giannis Antetokounmpo. Do you think there's any world where, like, Al Horford is trying to train Kristaps Porzingis into being the next Giannis stopper? Or do you think it's maybe more likely that someone like a Jason Tatum might end up taking Giannis defensively, even if Jason Tatum is going to be our primary offensive creator? I honestly think that it's going to be more Kristaps Porzingis' shoes than Jason Tatum's because I think that Jason Tatum is going to have, obviously he wants to buy on the defensive side of the ball, but in these type of playoff games, he's going to have a guy like Chris Middleton on him, a guy like Bobby Portis on him, and a guy like that, he's going to have to put a lot of offensive effort in there to be able to create and score for the Celtics. And even though we have a bunch of other creators and scorers with Chris Stops and Drew Holiday and Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum's the main focal point of this offense. And as you guys saw in game seven of the Eastern Conference Finals, when that wrist went down, all Celtics fans went crazy 
easy and just knew basically the game was over at that point. So you really need this superstar player to be bought in and ready to go. So I think that Kristaps Porzingis might actually be that Giannis stopper that Al Horford's trying to work him in with. I obviously, Al Horford is getting a little bit older. I still trust him being the Giannis stopper. Yes. But Kristaps Porzingis, if he can stay healthy on that defensive side and be very impactful, which I think I want him to be more impactful on the defensive side than the offensive side, that's me personally, I think he should be taking that role as the Giannis stopper for sure. Yeah, well, let's be honest. I mean, you're never going to stop Giannis. I mean, there's some, yes, teams, exactly. some teams have done their best, right? That Raptor series, of course, where they just kind of funneled him into the paint. They were taking charges left and right and just, just mm -hmm. kind of hounding him, forcing him to shoot a lot of free throws. That kind of style can work, right? Um, but he also has a title and he knows how to work through a team. And if you don't have someone who can consistently at least body him, he'll, he'll get his, but the, it's going to be a very exciting season. I think, and this Chris Stapp's defensive versatility is something I'm very excited to see once the preseason starts and then into the regular season, it's going to be, it's going to be a wild time for us Celtics fans. But that'll do it for this news edition of Celtics Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers and we really appreciate all your support. I'm Josh Goss for my co-host Bruce Velez. We'll catch you in the next one.